Good afternoon. God bless you. God bless you. Hey, this is the premiere of Jericho Way TV. We are so excited, praise God, that we are able to be with you. Praise God. And um, a 24-hour television network, we have two channels that are going. Good morning, Paul, or good afternoon. Praise God. Welcome. Uh, we are introducing our Jericho Way TV, and we're going to type the URL in so that you can partake of it as well, and you'll know where we are. <laughs> you'll know where the prophet, the apostle, and the prophet network is. Praise God. Let's get this going right there, okay? It's coming, it's trying. Oh, praise God. And so uh, our Facebook friends, uh, we're introducing to you our new network. Praise God. And we want you to take advantage of it. And so I'm going to have Jonathan go ahead and put the URL in. You got to put it in the comments. No, in the comments. Okay. Okay, put it in the comments. Praise God. Praise God. And so uh, I'm Prophet Tina, and of course, uh, 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 Apostle Jonathan is here with me and uh, help us celebrate uh, this great venture by, from the Lord. And so we're broadcasting live right now on our um, Jericho Way TV. We also have a prophetic, a central prophetic uh, a network as well. And that's going to be bringing to you School of the Prophets. <laughs> Praise God. And then we're going to have a whole channel devoted to the seer anointing. Praise God. The seer grace, the seers that God is calling forth in this season and this time. A whole network uh, devoted to that. And so we want you to partake of it. Jonathan is typing in the URL right now. And he got it in there, right? Okay. And just hit enter and then everything should pop up for you. Is that right? Let's take a look at it. Let's see. You got all the letters right in the dots. <laughs> Oops. Okay. No, one of them. Yeah, that's what I thought. And so he's for you. Uh, those of you that are on Facebook right now, we're getting the proper URL so that um, you will be able to tune in. Uh, and we're going to uh, post our program schedule as well. So all your favorite programs, you'll know what the programs are and when they are coming on. And so that's what we're going to be talking about right now, some of the great programming that we've scheduled for you. <laughs> oh, Don't cool. click on, because if you click on to it, it'll show us on there, okay? <laughs> so there's the URL for you, those of you who are on our Facebook. Uh, type that, uh, uh, put it in your phone, okay? And um, then you can access our programming. And also, too, while we're on, we're going to have... Uh, it's streaming at the same time on Jericho Way on Facebook, our Jericho Way uh, a website on Facebook. So it's Jericho Way TV. It's the Apostles and the Prophet Network <laughs> with three channels to start. we got to fill those channels up because we're going to have 10 channels all together, and we're going to be streaming and broadcasting all over the world on every stream that God opens the door for us to, to broadcast on. We're going to broadcast the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to broadcast the glory of God. Praise God. And we're going to get this word, you know, into the whole world on every stream that God uh, opens up. And we can buy equipment uh, through, uh, uh, what is that? I forgot the name of it, that we can stream 30 streams all at one time. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to do. You know, that's what we want to do for the Lord. And so we hope that you are feeling this vision with us. The vision to win the world through social media. Wow. <laughs> Who would have thought? Do you think that Zuckerman or Zuckerberg, whatever his name is, the guy that invented Facebook and all the other social medias, did you think that they thought at the time that they were inventing uh, these streams, these different social medias, that God was giving them these witty ideas so that he could use the streaming for his glory, for his truth. Can you see Jesus and the angels riding on the Facebook stream, riding on the, the Twitter stream as it beams out, you know, across the whole universe? <laughs> I've got angels sitting on the screen doing the work of God. I am so excited, as you can see, about this wonderful and marvelous opportunity to share with the word, okay, to, I mean, to share with the world the glory you know, of Jesus Christ, the glory of God in the earth today. Yeehaw. So um, I'll just talk a little bit about the channels, and then Jonathan is going to share with you uh, in detail about some of the programs that so far uh, that we have scheduled. So uh, we have the Jericho Way TV Network, 
and we do have, uh, it is an Apostles and Prophets Network. And so you're going to see the latest and greatest and the Apostles and Prophets on this network. You're going to hear great words from God. We have it on good authority that the word of God says that what? What did God say? He says, I'm not going to do anything unless I reveal it to my prophets first. And so we are going to keep out God with the prophets. You hear what I'm saying? If God is revealing it to the prophets, you're going to hear it on Jericho Way TV on the Apostles of the Prophets Network. You're going to hear what God is saying and what he's doing in this season and this time so that you can prepare yourself and get ready and be the one who God has called you to be. And then we have um, essential prophetic. Uh, there are essentials, necessary foundational truths, foundational understandings and teachings that we need as prophets today as God has assigned this new authority uh, in, in the prophetic. Okay, and so it will be a teaching network. Uh, it will call, be called the School of the Prophets, Academy of the Prophets, okay? It is the Navi School of Prophetic Knowledge, okay? And so you will what be... What is Navi? Navi means the bubbling up of the prophet, the one who speaks, the one who speaks utterances from God, okay? Navi is a Hebrew word uh, that, that means prophet, one who gets inspiration, bubbling up inspiration from God, praise God. And so it's the Navi School of Ministry, Navi School for the Prophetic, Navi School for the Apostles, praise God. And we're even going to have some classes in there for kids, for young prophets as well. And then we're developing our third network, and it is the seer network, okay? Not all seers, not all prophets are seers, but all seers are prophets. And we want to have a special network set aside just for seer teaching, seer training, and coming into that, that new anointing and grace that God has released to the seers, praise God. So those are the three networks. And so here, Jonathan is going to be feeding you some information. Praise God. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Of course, right now we, we are doing uh, two hours every morning, uh, Monday through Friday. The joy in the morning, uh, where Prophetina mm -hmm. and I are on, and Prophetina is sharing all that God has given her each day. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. We have uh, some ministers that we're trying to get in touch with. Uh, we have a ministry on Sunday morning. One has a great service on Saturday night mm -hmm. and has special teaching going on, uh, similar to what we're doing on Wednesday nights. Uh, and uh, there's so much that's going on. I, but we also want to present a balance. Uh, yes, we want the latest and greatest, but we also have to know where we've come from. And so uh, one of the assignments I was giving, given in school was to identify uh, some of the historical figures that really made a difference. Now we can go back you know, all the way back to the Catholic Church, you know, St. Francis of Assisi, and there was a lady that was moving back then. Uh, I don't remember her name, but they. St. Joan of the Cross? Or, no, um, uh, but about that time, and she was had such powerful spiritual experiences, she was levitating. Oh, what's her name? Oh, uh, uh, the, same name as, the same name as the, uh, the woman over in India. So they, Teresa, Teresa of Avila is her name. Avila, you know, yeah, she Teresa mentioned, Davila. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, God has been moving throughout the centuries, and we want to identify some of these moves mm -hmm. that yeah. God has been working all along. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I did uh, last year was I began to study uh, how the uh, Episcopal Church started, and that brought me to the Anglican Church, mm -hmm. and that brought me back to uh, the Pope sending a man of God over to the England area and God producing miracle after miracle and changing things dra dramatically. Yeah. We're coming up uh, next month in March of St. Patrick and, and St. Patrick did such a powerful work in England that, uh, I mean, just Ireland, uh, Ireland specifically, <laughs> thank yeah. you. Uh, he was driving out the Druids and people were coming to Christ in huge numbers. And so it's fun to go back and see what the beginnings were. Mm -hmm. Now, along the way, uh, many of our churches have have lost the inspiration, the joy, the power, mm -hmm. and they, they've kept the form, yeah. but, but not necessarily the power. Yeah. Uh, but we want to look at those beginnings and how God Absolutely. worked. Episcopals and Baptists and, and Presbyterians. And, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I, I did a study one time when I was working with the uh, Churches of Christ and Christian churches. And they, when they came to America, they said, we've had enough of denominationalism. Mm -hmm. Let's just call ourselves Christians and, and see if we can come together, especially in the smaller communities. Yeah. They didn't need seven denominations with a 
with a, a church of 70 people. Yeah. Yeah. It, let's just, you know, and, and then for you know about the congregational churches back mm -hmm. east, and yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, we don't see yeah. those out west very much, mm -hmm. but certainly part of our heritage. And so we want to look at some of those. Uh, I grew up in a church called the Missionary Church, and they were having a tough time. They started Taylor University, and it turned around from an African student who came in and had not the education, not the knowledge, but he had a touch from God. Mm -hmm. And not That's only awesome. did he ha start a revival, but he started God's moving in yeah. such a powerful mm -hmm. way that it saved the university and produced a little revival there. That was back in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and Taylor's in, in a smaller town in Indiana. So there's, if you go back to the history and you realize how God moved, you know, it reminds me of when Paul went to Rome and he says, you have a statue here to the unknown God. You don't even know why. You just know that there was a God who saved your city one day. And if you learn about the yeah. background, you realize that God had moved for that city even when they didn't know his name. Even when they didn't have a background, yeah. they had yeah. called upon this unknown God who they knew there was a God that created the universe, yeah. started everything, yeah. and they called upon him and he saved them from a plague. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So we want to look at some of those histories uh, and, and appreciate where we've come from. Uh, we talked about the apostles and prophets. We've got a twofold. Uh, what are apostles and prophets, mm -hmm. and how is God shaping and using them today? And then they're also going to be talking about reestablishing divine order mm -hmm. and how how are these apostolic centers are being set up? How were they set up in in the original back in the first century? You know, when Paul went to Ephesus, he established an apostolic center and, and then had uh, Timothy go over and be in charge of that. Mm -hmm. And in Rome and in Antioch and, of course, in Jerusalem being the first place. Mm -hmm. and, uh, how was this done and how yeah. were those church, those home churches uh, and then coming together uh, for the assembly? So, so much. Uh, we want to make sure that... Uh, uh, you've written a whole book on deliverance and yes. demonic uh, mm -hmm. uh, activity and mm -hmm. how God, uh, you didn't choose it, but God mm -hmm. chose you to, to be aware and gave you a discerning spirit and, yes. and uh, uh, that whole area. And then, of course, along with that is a recovery program. Absolutely. You mm -hmm. know, can you talk about that real quick, what that might entail? <laughs> yeah, uh, I've written a book called If You Fight, You Win. And it really is about a recovery journey for me. Uh, there were reasons why my body was being attacked by cancer. Uh, certain things in my history and my past were drawing them to me. Certain things in my character and personality that had not been regenerated yet. And so God gave me this long, this this um, this plan, this plan of redemption. And so, and I had uh, started recovery programs, had written a recovery program years ago and had been involved in a recovery plan, uh, celebrate recovery as one of the leaders uh, with the Nazarene church. And so, um, you know, so God put all this together uh, for me uh, and it's, it happened to uh, promote my deliverance and my healing. And so the book is called, If You Fight, You Win, because that's what the angel, when he came and, 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 and encouraged me and strengthened me, uh, he spoke to me and said, if you continue to fight, even in those weary times, you know, you will win. So it's Thank all about God. fighting for yourself. Really, it was about me. It was about me and my relationship with God and cleaning myself up, you know, to be neat for the master's use. Okay. <laughs> Not neat to eat, but neat for the master's use. So, uh, and it's, it's my journey uh, and, and, and what I did every day uh, to affect those changes. And as a result of those things that that God moved me in and moved me through and revealed to me, um, the healing came, the deliverances came as well, and many, many other opportunities in God, because once God opened you up uh, in the spirit realm, it's not just one way, one avenue that's opened up. One avenue opens up three, three opens up 10, and 10 opens up another 100. So there are many revelations and many understandings that he gave me as a result of that time that of my concentration and of my fight uh, that he gave me to fight for my life, to fight for my uh, mental health, my physical health as well, as well as my spiritual uh, strength. So God is a good God, and he did that. So why don't you, before you get into the rest of that, why don't you talk about some of the people that are going to be on. We know that Prophet Jane Brandon Brown is going to be joining us next Monday. 
Uh, she's got a noonday uh, a time that she's going to be sharing with us uh, uh, the revelations that God has given her, and she's one of the people that is that's going to be featured already. Yes, uh, thank you so much, Joan. I mean, Jane, for uh, agreeing to be a part of Jericho Way TV, the Apostles and the Prophets Network. Praise God. And so um, we have Prophet Jeremiah. Uh, this is my son, Jeremiah. He's going to be doing two programs. He's going to be doing a prophetic program um, uh, called Maximum Prophetic. All right. That's Jeremiah, uh, 26, almost 26. He's 25 year old prophet. And then the next day, uh, he's going to be presenting a specific program geared towards young people prophetic young people. He is a prophetic young man and was prophetic ever since, you know, uh, being born, as a matter of fact, and when he was seven years old, had a couple of visitations to heaven, uh, met up with Jesus, a couple of angels came down to earth and, did, um, and, uh, escorted, and escorted him up to Jesus's presence. He was up with Jesus and Jesus was giving him a tour of heaven. Oh, praise God. Twice. So uh, he has a marvelous witness of God, a marvelous uh, man, young man of God, um, and strength and honor uh, he, he honors God, and so he's going to be doing a, a program specifically geared towards millennials and younger, praise God. And so one of the things that we want to develop is we want to develop a network for young prophets as well. Right now, they're going to be mixed in with our regular programming, but as it grows, okay, you see God is going to be calling these young people, and God is going to be using them mightily. We are going to develop programming specifically for young prophets okay praise god and so we're excited about that and jeremiah is starting that uh with us next week praise god as well and so we also have uh, evangelist my daughter tiffany um uh, operates in the prophetic hasn't been ordained as a as a prophet yet she's going to be doing a command your day prayer time and teaching uh bless the lord for that and we have let the prophets speak okay once you talk about let the prophets speak since you posted a couple of those well, the, we, we used to have prophets in town. What it was, we had the opportunity to bring in people that uh, understood God's move. And maybe they were traveling evangelists. Maybe they were uh, powerful uh, prophets and apostles from around the country. And so we want to bring in people uh, that, that really are sensing what God is doing yeah. and host them. Uh, we might have one program where we just, uh, allow them to go, you know, mm -hmm. just prop them up and say go. Another time we might do an interview mm -hmm. and, and kind of talk to them uh, because we want to do twofold. One, we want to see what God is saying, mm -hmm. but we also uh, know that a lot of us are, are being trained into the prophetic, and so we want to know what kinds of things they faced and, and what, mm -hmm. what kinds of areas, uh, you know, how they got to be where they are, oh, yeah. what, what they faced, what they overcame, where their faith was applied, mm -hmm. where their uh, maturity uh, grew, uh, you know, and just some of those little things that, that help us understand the process. Mm -hmm. Amen. So there's so many good things that we, you know, of course, there are times we're just going to have worship because when the Lord starts moving, we, I, <laughs> I can't tell you how many times we've been listening to programming where the Holy Spirit began to move. And uh, my beautiful wife here just fell into a trance, and, and the Lord just started ministering to her. And she was just out on the couch yeah. on the outside. On the inside, she's having this visitation of God, <laughs> you know, and there's powerful things going on. Sometimes we can't believe just how much God wants to bless his people. And, and then that brings me up to one of the things I want to do is I want to have lots of testimonies and if we can yeah. even have a, a a show dedicated to that or or just kind of interweave it along the way because there's power in testimony there's power in your testimony you should be able to give your testimony in a short amount of time um, and and then a, a lengthier version as well but it's a, it's so important to hear those testimonies Amen. how god is working today if i could i would i would uh, have my fingers on the pulse of, of 50 churches here in town and have each one of them uh, call me on Sunday and say, okay, here are the here are the five that we got in our church. Here's the three we heard. Here's the yeah. seven over there. Yeah. Here's the 10 over there. And either just present them or, yeah. or document them and videotape them so we could all be rejoiced. Because you know what? Your God is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Your, yeah. Our God is incredible. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Whew. The Father, Son, and Holy mm -hmm. Ghost are one. They're in unity. Amen. You know, and then 
uh, we want to be able to present a, a, a full understanding. Uh, there may be times where we will go through the foundations again. Where we see a lot of people, we spent so much time in foundations and we find out people are moving on with God and they, they don't have that foundation. So we want to make sure that everybody has that. And that's, you know, another place that I was thinking about was uh, marketplace ministries. Even if we just study a little bit of their history, you know, how is Chick-fil-A doing well being closed on Sunday? Mm -hmm. We have a car dealership here that's probably the strongest in the nation uh, and for a Ford dealership, and they're closed on Sunday. And I know that they give a whole lot uh, to uh, different ministries. Uh, we know about Hobby Lobby and how uh, they just spent a fortune uh, uh, were the biggest contributors to putting together the, the Museum of the Bible in Washington, oh, D.C. Praise God. Thank God. Praise God. Uh, my sisters are involved in school co-ops uh, where Christian families can come together. Uh, they're homeschooled, but they also have developed a place where they can be, I, I call it naturalized, because they're, they're, they're socialized with, with other Christians. And uh, a lot of different ways that God is using people in business, you know, we love it when uh, uh, people come out with Christian films or uh, uh, people have a way of, of bringing the bright side, the holy side uh, to our world, praise God. Uh, I know there's a whole nother class about uh, a Christian worldview and how a lot of times we end up with an American worldview or we end up with a uh, a capitalistic worldview or a socialistic worldview, kind of depending on what culture we grew up in. And so we want to we want to look at what a Christian worldview is Amen. versus everybody else's. Um, you talked about the ten step program. Uh, there's just so many things that God wants to do. We want to make sure that there's something for kids. We want to make sure there's something for singles. We want to make sure, just like a a, a good um, mega church would uh, that, that we're speaking to a lot of different areas of life. I remember um, visiting with a lady who had an autistic child uh, and others that were uh, hurt in some way or, or uh, uh, had, had special needs. And, and sometimes those families uh, are forgotten by the church. And so I want to make sure that we, that we make sure that, that we include, we're inclusive. Uh, God, God loves us. Amen. What else do you have to say before you go back to work? Uh, right now, I'm looking for uh, some information on my programming, and I'm bringing up the program channel. That's what I'm doing. So you go ahead and talk more about some of the other programs that we're going to be doing. And I will, that's what I'm trying to do right now. All right. One of the things that we want to be looking at is uh, uh, the heroes of the faith. You yeah. know, some led churches. Uh, some led denominations, some were just traveling missionaries. Uh, Catherine Kuhlman was somebody that affected uh, this country and, and in my life as well. Uh, just seeing her, uh, just not declaring that she had any special office, just a handmaiden of the Lord. And God yeah. used her so powerfully around the world. Uh, Oral Roberts and, and how he moved and how he grew. Uh, you know, God worked through Catholic movements like St. Francis and the Benedictine. God there's, uh, did a whole study on missionaries and how God began the missionary societies. And some, there are lots of different movements that have gone through even the missionary societies. God has given a strategy. Oh, one man, uh, Don Richardson, I used to read these wild and crazy stories that were uh, biographies of men that went to the mission field and were working with people uh, back in the 60s and 70s that seemed like they were in the Stone Age by comparison to where we were in America. And they had to somehow present the gospel. Mm -hmm. And the place that he went, he began to share not the Old Testament, uh, but went right to the life of Jesus. And when he told the story of um, let me just share this before you finish. Okay, then I'll get back and you can finish with it. Pray with the prophet. That's me tomorrow morning live on Jericho Way TV. Okay, pray with the prophet at 6 a.m. Uh, Mountain time, that's Phoenix time, but that would be 8 a.m. 
Eastern, uh, time. Eastern time. So you're going to be able to pray with me live tomorrow on Jericho Way TV, live prayer, uh, live prophecy, <laughs> live healing, live deliverance, okay? And so after I uh, do that, then the School of the Prophets is going to be coming on, and we're going to have some teaching for you on School of the Prophets. Well, guess who's going to be coming on with his own uh, his own uh, presentation, Apostle Jonathan, tomorrow at 11 a.m. And at 1230, we're going to be doing Let the Prophets Speak. So we got a great lineup in the Let the Prophets Speak. Pro, uh, we have apostles and bishops uh, that have joined us, and we're going to be bringing them on. We have so many other people that are going to be coming onto the network that we haven't announced yet because we haven't finalized it yet. But you need to stay tuned because as soon as we sign on someone new, uh, to work with us, you're going to hear about uh, hear about them, and uh, and I, I give thanks to uh, Prophet Jane Brandon Brown. She's the first one to come aboard, and we thank God for her. She's going to be seeing her around noontime, I think Eastern time, uh, next week. So we're going to as soon as we get the program schedule uh, fixed for next week, all set, we're going to uh, uh, we're going to get that out to you so that you uh, can partake of our scheduling and know what's coming on when. We really appreciate you for being with us today. Now, Jonathan is going to stay with you. He's going to be sharing some more information uh, with you about our new network. I'm so excited. I'm excited, not just for us. It's for you that I'm excited because all the good news is going to be coming on just for you. God has got design, words that are designed for you, healings that are designed for you, deliverances that are designed for you, prosperity that's designed for you, favor that's designed for you, and it's all going to be coming through Jericho Way TV and the Navi uh, School of the Prophets. Oh, yeah, praise God. And so uh, come on, let your friends know that we'll be on, and we'll get that, that uh, program schedule out to you uh, with, a, um, with a full schedule starting on Monday, okay? Monday, where everybody's going to be around. Jonathan and I are going to be doing some things tomorrow, so we want you to catch us tomorrow. And later on this evening, we're going to be scheduling some things as well. Uh, I mean, putting some things up so that you can watch, okay? And we love you guys, and so we'll see you again real soon. You're going back to work? I am. Praise God. Oh, remember, God loves you. He's trying to bring uh, an incredible power to you. He wants you to be knowledgeable. He wants you to have understanding. He wants you to flow in the Spirit of God. He wants you to be raised up and be all that you can be. That's the goal of this ministry. Hallelujah. We want to present this in such a way that you will be encouraged. Hallelujah. You'll be able to go back and look at old uh, videos if you if you happen to miss them when they're live. Uh, this is a great opportunity uh, to be able to not only have live, but also be able to have a, a like a history. There will be uh, certain classes uh, that we present along the way since we have uh, more than one channel available to us, we're going to be able to do some um, special uh, teachings where maybe we'll, we'll, we'll grab a, a select number of people and we'll just teach them. Now, there'll probably be a charge for those classes, but the point is that we want to be, because if we can condense all that material into a weekend or into a class like throughout a semester, if we can condense the, the deeper information and get it into a smaller group of people, then, then we can really, really be uh, charged up. We can pray over you. Uh, you know, the Bible talks uh, about laying on of hands and the laying on of hands for impartation, for blessing, for uh, passing along the, the mantle that God has given us. So we, we want to make sure that you walk away with spiritual gifts, that you walk away with healing, that you walk away with with a, a strength and an understanding of where you are and where you're going and how God can use you. It's, it's so important. You know, in, in the day that I was growing up, we went to church and we sat there, the pastor did his thing. We were supposed to be nice and not do anything and, and or maybe go out and share the gospel uh, at the park or something like that. But God has turned this thing upside down. Uh, I love the term that was coined by John Wimber called power evangelism, you know, where, where people are able to use their prophetic gifts and uh, have a word of knowledge for somebody, have a word of wisdom, or pray for somebody and see them healed. And, and of course, 
that's going to make a difference in how people think about God then. They're going to, they're going to be one to Christ. They're, the Bible says that uh, he who is wise wins souls. So we want to be, uh, we want two things. We want to win souls, but we also want to have a winsome personality. We want people to say, I like being around those Christians. I like that. That These people are awesome. I don't always get them because we all know that, that uh, a lot of things in the spirit, you just don't know uh, until you've be, been born again. You, you can't understand spiritual things because they're, they're understood by the spirit. But people need to have a, we need to have a reputation in the church of being welcoming and loving and encouraging. And I know if you've been around like I have, uh, you know, you let somebody know you're a minister and they're immediately like, oh, I better watch my language. I better watch this. I better watch that. You know, they're kind of afraid to be around you. That, that part's probably not going to go away because hopefully the spirit of God is so strong in you that people are convicted. People are encouraged to go on and, and serve the living God. We want you to be filled up to the fullness of God. That's why we want to do these, these programs, not just with us, but with other ministers and other people that have touched us, uh, people that we've been able to partner with, because uh, we just want God's glory to shine throughout the earth. Uh, people are, are coming up in, in ministry. People are coming up, want an opportunity to get stronger and better at their, at their work for the Lord. And, uh, you know, ideally, we'd love to mentor each and every one of you individually and, and talk to you. We're going to do this on, on the stream, and we're praying that God raises up other apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Our job, according to uh, the scripture, is to equip you. Praise God. Uh, why is he given these offices? Why is he given them? For the, that you would be raised up for the work of the ministry. Hallelujah. Not so that you would necessarily be a preacher, but so that your life would be effective. What I'm excited about this area of marketplace ministries and how people have, have started businesses and, and use them uh, not only to make money, but also to be a blessing to the community, also be a blessing to others. Learn how to, to multiply according to the grace of God. There was a, a church of I remember they, they came around and showed some movies how God changed whole cities, whole villages by the power of God. But how did they do it? They knew how to pray. When they were having crop failure after crop failure, and then instead of having little squashes this big, uh, they ended up having these huge squashes. Uh, and not only just taking care of their own little village, but he, being able to export crops all around the place. So they became, they flourished in every possible way. This one city, uh, there were several cities nearby, villages size really. Uh, they, they had a, a number of jails and they had a whole bunch of uh, bars in this tiny little town because the place had been filled with, with alcoholism and drug addiction and uh, they believed in black magic and had lots of witches and warlocks and all kinds of craziness going on. But there was a revival in that area. And there were prayer warriors in that area. And they began to pray and really seek, call after God, seek him. And God didn't just change their little church. He changed the whole city. Praise God. They, played, they got to the place where they had to close the jails because there was nobody in them anymore. All the, the bars ended up closing because there weren't any drunks anymore. I mean, there were, it was amazing. God gave the, made their city flourish. One man uh, barely had a running truck and uh, with his grocery farming business. And then once God started blessing uh, not just the city, but the soil and everything about it, God began to move. And he ended up having a number of trucks and hiring a number of people to export his goods to other places. That's the kind of God we serve. He wants to do miracles. We want to let you know what's going on. We want to let you know how God's moving in our hearts, in our minds, in our spirit, how, to be, how God can change our society. There's another great story in Colombia where it was the, uh, the cocaine capital of the world where they were making 
a billion dollars a month. Uh, I think it was actually two billion a month I was just reading. And unbelievable wealth, unbelievable power, unbelievable treachery uh, that was going on. And, and that was takes me back. Uh, but the, the people began to pray there in Colombia, and the whole country changed. Hallelujah. Sure, he used DEA, he used other people to bring about the conclusion, but it started out, the change really began with people on their knees. It cost a couple of those leaders their lives, but a change happened. Praise God. And that was the story I had started to tell earlier about Don Richardson as a missionary. Uh, I believe that was. No, that was the, uh, one guy went to Papua New Guinea, but he went to a, uh, another place where the people had uh, so misunderstood how God wanted the world to run that their highest honor when they told the story of Jesus was Judas Iscariot, because to them, treachery was the highest art and the highest order of life. They thought he was awesome because he, to them, he set up Jesus and then smashed them in the end. Of course, he didn't bother reading about the part where he hung himself immediately afterwards because he felt so horrible for it. But he had to learn. And, and then Don Richardson began to pray first over his place. And he wrote a book called The Peace Child because what happened was he's looking for a way to share the gospel with these people. And there were warring tribes coming at each other, and they were about ready to kill each other both off, but they had a system in place where he was watching, and finally they stopped the war, and they said, we can't have this anymore, and one tribe gave his son over to the other tribe, and that was called the peace child, and brought peace, and didn't have war anymore, and when the minister, Don Richardson, the one who translated the entire scripture uh, into their language, praise God. When he saw that, he knew about a peace child from heaven <laughs> who was given to earth out of there so that there could be peace with God and there could be war no more. Hallelujah. And he began to preach the, the gospel of the peace child and the the whole tribe got saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then they brought that knowledge and that understanding that God has a redemptive plan in every society. And missionaries began to unlock keys in every culture. And one after another after another, it wasn't the same one. The, the fact that there was one. Hallelujah. And God used that incredible understanding to bring tribes whole tribes at a time to the gospel. I love hearing about David Hogan and Heidi Baker, how they're working in Mexico and in Africa, and God is using with power evangelism. And when I say power, we're talking about healings. We're talking about healings right on the spot in front of everybody. We're talking about people getting raised from the dead uh, in front of the village, and then a whole village turning to Christ. Those are the kind of testimonies I want to hear about. I want to hear about the saving grace of God in history, in the now, in America, in Europe, in Africa, in Asia. Out of the, I know there's underground churches that we would barely be able to even tell their stories, except uh, somebody got back. And so I love to hear how God is moving today. I love the testimony of Jesus. Oh, it's like the spirit of prophecy. And why do I say that? Number one, it's in the word of God. But number two, when you hear a, a testimony, oh, hallelujah, you can grab by faith and, and cling on to that same spirit and it can come to you. Just like um, there was a, a ministry and, and uh, they were just telling about it up in Redding, California. Uh, and they, Bill Johnson was, was preaching and somebody in the congregation had a terrible club foot. Uh, they could hardly walk. And in the middle of the service, ah, praise God, their child, praise God, their child was healed in the Sunday school of a club foot. And it immediately became straight. And when she came out of Sunday school, she was completely healed. Oh, hallelujah. And I mean, 
that was the coolest miracle in the world because they're only seeing one miracle every few months, you know, and, and that's how things start. But when somebody else heard about it, heard the testimony on the streaming, they began to, that was when they first began to stream uh, and record the videos. There was a mom watching and she had a daughter with a really bad turned in foot. And she told her daughter to, uh, called out her name and she came around the corner and said, yes. She said, take off your shoes. And so she took off her shoes and he says, and you walk over to me. And as she walked, that terrible turned in foot became normal, just walking over to her mom because she had heard the testimony of how God could heal her club foot, believe God for it. And the Lord Jesus reproduced that miracle. Hallelujah. <laughs> And can tell testimony after testimony of God's working in this day, in this time, all around the world. God's crazy about you. That's our God that's moving that way. That's our God that is incredible. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeshua HaMashiach. That's Jesus in, in original language, Hebrew. And, you know, Yeshua, he's the Messiah, HaMashiach. He's the Messiah, the risen one. Oh, praise God. If you serve a little, <laughs> praise God. If you serve our God, give him praise. Put a little praise on it as the psalmist sings. Hallelujah. Let God hear your praise and your thanksgiving. Maybe you're somebody who hasn't given thanks in a long time. Maybe God is, you're gifted. You have one gift after another, after another. You've been at the top of your class. You're at the top of your game. You're at the top of your business. You've done all kinds of things. Did you ever stop and say, thank you, God. Thank you for making me like this. Hallelujah. And, you know, some of us, we only have one or two talents. And, and God says, use them to the best of your ability. Hallelujah. But there's some people that are, they are born, it seems like, they can do anything. Praise God. But what are our responses are the same? We are, we are thrilled for your accomplishments. Just like you see somebody from your hometown when, when, when your football team wins or somebody goes on a singing competition and they represent your state, you're thrilled for them, you know? And when we see God working, God raising up somebody in whatever sphere, we're going to cheer for you. We're going to cheer that God is raising you up and giving you a, a place where you can share the good news. How would they just remember where you came from? Remember who gave you that authority and those gifts. How would they? Let's praise the Lord together. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you for Jericho Way TV and the opportunity to bring the gospel to all these new people. We pray that you would bring us the right people at the right uh, relationships that we can trust one another and trust you to bring forth the best possible program uh, that, that can possibly happen in Jesus mighty name and Lord we bless the people now and I want to give you the ironic blessing as well the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom Peace. God bless you. We'll see you again soon.